I found this beat up table at the thrift store last week and it's quite damaged, but it's perfect for a project that I wanna do with these beautiful stencils. I'm gonna start by painting my table white. So I've got a fusion picket fence here and I'm gonna go ahead and give the table two coats of this white paint all over. I'm gonna go ahead and finish with this coat of paint and add a second and I'll be back shortly to start the stenciling project. Now that the table's painted, it's time to start playing with our beautiful stencils. So I'm going to lay my stencils wherever I'd like them on the table. I'm going to take a container and I'm going to add all kinds of bright colored paint into my container. And I'm going to add some texture into the paint. And I'm going to use the Fusion Fresco powder, but you could use baking soda. So I'm going to start pouring all of my paints in here. And then I'll show you in just a second when I get all my paints mixed what they look like. Now that I've got a whole bunch of paint in here, I wanna add a little bit of that thickening agent just to make these a little um, more sturdy, a little more um, just puffed up a little bit. So I'm just gonna add some of this in and mix it into each of those colors. And I'm not worrying about the colors mixing together. Um, I don't need to keep them separate completely. So we're just gonna go ahead and mix this in. Now that I've got my paints all mixed here with the texture medium, I'm going to start putting it over the stencil. So you can do this in several ways. You can either use um, a paintbrush or you can use one of these trowels or spatulas. And we want to start just spreading this all over and I'm gonna hold down um, the stencil as much as possible here. And I'm just gonna start spreading my stuff all over. And there's no rhyme or reason. You just want to kind of mix your colors up. These are gorgeous spring colors and summer colors. So just kind of mix them all up. If your colors start to get a little too muddy and you do want to um, keep them father, um, rather clean or um, separate, then you can always switch up your spatula or your paintbrush between um, colors. Okay, and once you have your stencil completely covered like this, you want to very gently try and take off a little bit off of the top. You don't want it to scrape it too much or take too much off because you don't want to push it under those little stencil bits. So we're just going to take this off just a little bit. You don't want to smudge it too much either. I'm just going to take a little bit of that off. Okay, and once we've got this done and removed some of it, we can peel up that stencil. How gorgeous is that? If there's any little bits that you don't like or that got scraped when, um, when you were lifting that up, now is a great time to just clean that up a little bit. While it's still wet. And if a little drip down when you were at the edge, you can do that as well. And there you go, there's loads of texture here. So I'm gonna let this dry and I'll be back to show you in just a minute. When the paint is completely dry, if you find you have a little bit too much texture or more texture than you'd like, you can take a piece of fine sandpaper and just give it a light sanding and then brush it off. I actually like the texture on this, so I'm gonna leave it. But if you do find it's too much, you can give it a quick sand and just brush off that extra dust. I am absolutely in love with this gorgeous table. Who would have thought that you could turn a $7 thrift store find into this beautiful piece of art with just a stencil and some paint? Thank you so much for watching this episode of Home Talk. I'm Lisa from Recreated Designs. I'll see you next time. And we're gonna use this Parsons side table. This one is just one that I had in my garage. I think I gave it to my son when he moved into his first apartment. This is a pillow, just a decorator pillow that I had on my bed, but it had lost its loft. And so I'm going to repurpose it and use the batting from the inside for the top of our footstool. I'm just tearing it a little bit to open it up to fit the actual um, top of the footstool. This is a, a velvet leopard fabric that I got at a discount store. The whole, the whole roll was $10, so, and I love it. The first thing I'm going to do is just put a little 
tick mark um, with my scissors and then I'm gonna um, to, to get the right size and then I am going to use my ruler as just kind of a guide to cut a straight edge so I'm gonna lay my fabric facing right side down and then my batting and then my side table right side down and then I'm going to put my first staple in on the middle of one side, just pick any side. And then I'm gonna turn it over and I'm going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. I'm going to pull it taut, but not super tight. And I'm going to put that staple down right in the middle. And then I'm going to go all the way to the outside and then work my way back in and across I'm going to turn it over when I've got just two sides stapled down just to make sure that everything is where it needs to be, especially if you have a pattern. This I'm folding like a present and I'm tacking the insides down on the sides with my staple gun and then I'm going to just fold that over and make sure that my sides are fully covered and I'm going to staple the fabric down in a straight row and then I can cut that excess fabric off or you can leave it and staple it down it's up it's up to you then you get it turned over and it looks like this I am measuring because I'm going to put my first tuft in the center and then I'm going to do a total of five so I'm going to do one in the center and then four and then four others to make it even and I do love how it looks in the end I don't wouldn't want any more than that for this size I did decide to go ahead and upholster the legs I have upholstery in upholster in air quotes because I'm hot gluing but I cut my fabric the length the exact length of the leg and then I'm going to hot glue just that's just the cut edge the rough edge to the back side of that leg there here is my faux buttons so I'm taking some round felt furniture sliders and I have traced the exact size of the slider onto my fabric and cut it in the perfect circle I didn't need to hem it or do anything to it because this fabric won't fray and then I am taking the hot glue on the felt side of the round and I'm gluing it down to my staple and then here it is finished I could put a tray on it I could use it as a side table I can put my feet up on it it's very sturdy it's adorable it goes perfect in my house and I love it I hope you'll try it and thank you for watching Home Talk.